What's up, y'all? I got a family feed, so let's get into this tea. I apologize for my nerves because they bad. We are getting into part 12 of uh, the who the F did I marry soccer? All right. I know I look rough, but... Finally in the house. It's okay. Anyway, so this is part 12 of Who the Did I Marry? So this is the backstory on what I was told for the ex-wife. This is important. Pay attention. (laughs) All right. This is 2020. So this is what I was told in 2020. I was told that he and his ex-wife used to be friends then they started dating and subsequently got married they got married in california um he had bought a house with the money that he made from arena football they had apparently had gotten married on the downward of the arena football career um had a nice house he showed me a picture of the house showed me pictures inside the house remember that Anybody can get pictures off of Google, friend. Showed me pictures inside the house. It was a really nice home in San Diego. And um, oh, love it. Basically, what happened was that he came home from work early one day and uh. had the hiccup. Sorry, came home early from work one day, and his wife was sleeping with another man. Oh, the man was in the house. Oh, he and the man get into it. Her son, who um, is about 17 years old in 2020, um, she had two kids, a daughter and a son. The son apparently Uh. was on his way home from school Uh. when my ex-husband found his previous wife in bed with another man. Uh. So the story goes that he and the guy fought. He kicked the guy out. He kicked his ex-wife out, Uh. but told her the kids could stay. The kids are not biologically his. Those are his stepkids. Yeah. Um, she was like, you must be kidding. Like, I'm not leaving my kids here. Right. The kids are old enough to where um, they were like, we're, we don't want to go because you fucked up. We don't want to leave. So apparently she leaves. Um, the kids stay with him for a few weeks. And uh, then she gets her own place. The kids move out, move in with their mom. He um, he files for a divorce in California. He files for a divorce in California. Wow. And it was an ugly divorce. She was asking for spousal support, all kinds of stuff. Wow. And then it turned into, um, you know, I'll help you with the kids. Not child support, but just I'll, I will give you some money for wow. the kids. Because apparently he was very close to the kids. Wow. And he wanted to keep a relationship with the kids. Wow. Their biological fathers, apparently there were two fathers. Wow. Their biological fathers were not in the picture. Wow. So wow. Um, the divorce starts out contested and ugly, eventually becomes amicable. Eventually they become cordial with each other. Wow. So my ex-husband moved. This is all all before he ever met me. So I'm telling you the story of what I was told in 2020. So eventually, about two years later, is when his job approached him about an opportunity to transfer to Georgia. And so he took it. New beginning, fresh start. He has family in Georgia. He took it. He told me this story pretty much the second or third conversation we had. Uh. Um, So it was always from the beginning that she had cheated. He caught her and um, he had filed for divorce, Uh. but he was still close to the kids. They still had a great relationship. I've heard him. I've heard him on the phone with the kids. You about to piss me off. She keeps saying. Because you ain't heard nobody on the phone. Just nobody. That's Marcus on the phone. Hey, Marcus. Marcus, hello. Hey. How you been? How is it that everybody's on the phone, but 
but you did not speak to us all. The stress that I am enduring. <clears throat> you know, just encouraging them, helping them, helping the 17 year old like with homework. Um, the kids really apparently wanted to meet me and I was fine with that. Um, but couldn't talk to him on the phone. Would, apparently he would send them money, you know, if they needed something because he he loved the kids as if they were his own. Uh. I'm telling you the story as I was told it in 2020. So oh, sure. let's see around April or May of 2020. He informs me that his ex-wife has moved to Georgia. Uh, Apparently, she's staying with her sister in Gwinnett County. So, she has moved to Georgia. The two kids are now in Georgia. And so, when he tells me all this, I'm like, so, what? what's that supposed to mean? Now, I will say this. He never made it seem as if she wants him back. He never presented that. It was always, no, nah, you know, we're, we're cool for the kids. We're cool for the kids. Um, but he, he's never presented that she was trying to get him back. I feel like it's fair to her for me to say that. Um, and again, stay with me. It all comes out. But um, that was the backstory in regards to the ex-wife. That they got married in California, ah. and divorced in California, ah. and then she eventually moved to Georgia, to Gwinnett County, ah. after he had transferred to Georgia for his job. Um, he did tell me that, you know, every now and then he'll get a text message from her. Mm -hmm. um, he told me that he, you know, told her when I was pregnant, he felt like she needed to hear that from him instead of hearing it from the kids. Um and we got into a bit of an argument about that, but honey, in the big scheme of things that anyway, so we got into an argument about that. I felt like the fuck is, that's none of her business. Um, nah. but that's the, the overall backstory of her. So remember, <laughs> cause there will be a quiz, but just remember he, um, Met her in California. Yeah. Married, Married her, her in California. California. Divorced her in California. California. They moved, moved to Georgia, Georgia to Gwinnett in Gwinnett County after, after, after moved they moved to Georgia. Moved to Georgia. Yep. Are we clear? Yep. Okay. Bitch don't okay. even need a notepad with you. You just, she's a good teacher. I hope she's a teacher. All right. Okay. Yep. Part 13. Of we here. Who the fuck did I marry? Um. So... I've kind of given you guys all the backstory. Let's just okay, kind of recap real quick. <laughs> so I told you how we met. Met in March of 2020. Um, basically, Georgia got shut down. I keep saying shut down. Got locked down. Girl, we, we were shut down. Together. I know it was crazy. Couldn't it do was nothing. crazy. Um, I really liked him. <laughs> and <sighs> thought he liked me. So uh, I feel like you still like him the way you said that. And I don't like it. I told you guys how we met. Um, things moved at a rapid, rapid pace. Met in March. Moved in together pretty much beginning of end of March, beginning of April. Found out I was pregnant in May. Lost the baby in June. Had to have surgery in July. Started looking for houses. Um, started looking at cars. All this stuff happened literally between March and the end of, excuse me, in August is when I got my car. So, um, got a car in August. He paid the down payment for that car, um, which I was shocked by. And no, it was not a BMW or an Audi. It was a Nissan Altima, but I loved that car at the time. So he paid. Fred, the you ain't got the car either. Oh lord! Down payment for that car. <clears throat> Told me he would help me with the car payment. The biggest mistake that I made, and I'll explain why I say this. The biggest mistake I made was that I signed myself up for a car, a car note, where I knew I needed his help to pay the car note. I knew better. My mom has always taught me: do not ever. Put yourself in a position where you were financially dependent on a man. And all of that went out the window. 
And the reason why I say that was the biggest mistake is because when I have pulled back the layers of this whole monstrosity of life <laughs> that I lived for 2020 and 2021, it really does boil down to the fact that I truly ended up marrying him more out of fear than anything else. We know. And I'll expound upon that later. But, you ain't even got to. We already know. Um, I got the car in August. And by this point, I was I was exhausted of looking at cars. I was mad that I didn't get a BMW X5 dark blue with cognac interior. Um, and I was tired of looking at houses, getting my hopes up, looking at a house and picturing myself in the master bedroom, the kitchen, the island, you know, all that stuff. I'm a visual person and I was tired of giving my getting my hopes up. Um so now we're going to segue into fall going into the holidays. <sighs> Here's what happened. In October, we looked at another house. This house was in Marietta. Absolutely gorgeous. The nerve of you um, to still be looking at houses. It was gorgeous. I want to say that the house was about $700,000. I really liked the house. I could see myself living there. I could see myself cooking there. Um, and so, subsequently... My ex-husband put in an all-cash offer on oh, that house. My I watched God. him put an all-cash offer in on the house. Our real estate agent, Scott, called us. And you had to get your own car? So you had to get your own car, but he helped you with the down payment. And for some reason, you done forgot the fact that he did not get you that Audi. Like, that shit just went out the window. And you entertained another house? Man. I'm more mad at her than I am that man. He's a... You are something else, sir. But lady, come on now. It's about 24 hours later. And he said, um, the sellers love your offer. The offer was an all cash, full asking price offer. Seven hundred thousand. <laughs> Let that sink in. Mama, can I get on my feet he right said quick? The sellers love the offer. <laughs> they are asking that you do that you show proof of funds so that they can accept the offer. My ex husband said, I will show proof of funds when they accept the offer. The seller said, Great. We'll accept the offer when you show proof of funds. So basically, we got into a stand a standoff. Um, and if you're a real estate agent or you work in real in um, real estate, I would love to know your thoughts on this. I had asked people in my personal life, like, "Have you ever heard of this before?" And I've had plenty of people who said I side with the ex husband. I would not show my bank statements until they. Um, accepted the offer and then I had other people who were like I wouldn't accept an all cash offer unless I verify that the person can pay so I'm just curious what your thoughts are okay so our real estate agent called us and was like guys you know the sellers are giving you two days to show proof of funds I had the letter that he showed me from Chase I sent that to Scott but that was for a mortgage the offer was for all cash. So he needed to show all that he needed to show proof of funds that he had the cash to pay $700,000. Just getting everybody hopes up. He didn't up. show it. Well, we know that. He refused to budge on showing them um, proof of funds until they accepted the offer because he was afraid that they were going to create a bidding war. So... What ended up happening was Scott called us and said, you know, I apologize because I didn't do my due diligence as a realtor. He said, before I ever started showing you guys a house, I should have 
um, collected your pre-approval letter and proof of funds. He said, so at this point, my broker has informed me that I cannot show you guys another house until you show at least us, meaning the um, real estate firm, until you show us proof of funds. Right. And so I'm just like, well, I'm telling my ex-husband, just show them the fucking proof of funds. Like, oh, my God, I'm sorry. You ain't even seen the proof of funds, friend. Because I would have had to see the proof of funds. You ain't about to send me everywhere with no proof of funds. Has informed me that I can then do your job correctly. It it got a little ugly and it got uncomfortable because I'm... And so it was a lot of, you know, I don't really... I find that this is... After the house, the first house, I need to see the proof of funds or I'm not going to be with you either. You ain't going to keep playing with me. Really unprofessional because it's not our fault that you didn't do your job correctly. It it got a little ugly and it got uncomfortable because I'm like, I don't understand why you don't show them proof of funds when you clearly just signed a document stating that you're putting an offer in at full asking price. This was the same thing that the realtor was saying. He was like, but you just signed an offer. So what's the problem like you want them to accept the offer and then you'll show everyone the proof of funds and my ex-husband without missing a beat said yes so scott did his best to work with the seller and say look accept the offer he'll show you he'll open the books he'll show you the proof of funds these sellers were like, no, that's not. And it wasn't so much the sellers. It was the seller's agents. I can't believe that the damn broker or the real, the realtor, I would have had to question the realtor uh, company. Cause nigga, you was too desperate for that non-existent 700,000. Cause you know, if a nigga got 700,000, he going to show you 700,000. <laughs> Big respect to the seller's agent. Um, but the seller's agent was like, no, that's not how we're doing business. He needs to show those proof of funds before my, before I advise my clients to accept his offer, period. If he's not willing to do it, we'll go on to the next offer. Because they did have another offer on the table. For um, It was less than asking price. Then he planned what other people offers. Um, they like, were come. willing to accept that offer over the all-cash offer because those people had basically shown proof. So subsequently, the house fell through. We passed the two-day deadline. They went with the other offer. Also at this point, our real estate agent, Scott, and I do not blame him for this, pretty much cut all ties. Because what he, I believe, felt like was, I don't know what's going on, but something's going on. And this is not how I do business. So until you guys are ready to... Scott just is stupid. Because I would have been cut his ass off. Show the proof of funds um, needed to buy a house. You need to get yourself another agent. Because we were already about 20 to 25 houses deep by this point. We what? had already put in two other offers. They fell through. And now here we are with this house. And once again, it fell through. Okay. This nigga and his wishful thinking ass mentality... Girl, I got the pee. I just.
Oh, yeah. God damn it. All right. 14. Okay. So, um, good news and bad news. Number one, this is part 14 of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? Bad news. This is going to be the last post for the night. And the reason why, good news, um, tomorrow's my birthday. So I'm just going to make this video, post it, and then I will pick back up probably Friday. Because honestly, I truly want um, to enjoy my birthday tomorrow. I just... You ain't got to explain that. My birthday. Um, all right. So y'all don't be upset. <laughs> just if anything watch parts 1 through 14 then um, we'll be ready for part 15 so the house fell through in October 2020 and what I told him was I said I don't want to look at another house I don't want to talk about cars I want to get through the holidays um, because it was going to be a holiday season where I could not celebrate my family because of COVID. Nigga, get away from me. That's what you need to do. COVID. So I said, I just want to get through the holidays. I want to get through the end of the year. Um, and we'll revisit stuff in January. I was very calm when I said it. No argument, nothing like that. Um, and he said he understood I just, a lot of what fueled me staying in this situation really was the fact that number one, I didn't want to be alone. Number two, I didn't want to look stupid um, by having the relationship end so quickly. Well, we knew you didn't want to be alone, but not looking stupid for the relationship ending so quickly is crazy. For everyone to be like, we told you something was up. Um, and number three, I was ready to get married and that what ready to get married fueled a lot of stuff. Um, and again, I was still making my audio diaries. So listening back to it, I knew some, I bet it's more men out here waiting to trap her ass right now. Something was, was wrong. I admit that I knew something was wrong. But what I thought it was, truthfully, was like, why does it seem like there's always something? Like, why can't we just go ahead and get the house? Um, why is it always something? Why can't I just get the BMW? It still didn't dawn on me how deep the something went. And for the people who keep asking, um, I'm going in order of events. So yes, there will be a video where I explain how everything came out and what came out, what was true, what was not true. It's coming. I'm just getting all of this out in order. So I told him I didn't want to look at a house no more. Um, I don't want to talk about houses. Do not mention the word Zillow. <clears throat> Do not mention the word the word uh, realtor. Nothing. Let me just get through the holidays. Shit, he ain't even and had one of my anyway. Self, the question was, what do you want to do? You want to stay with him, or do you want to cut your losses? And the part that kept me constantly second guessing myself was, what if he's not lying? What if he's not lying? There's no, literally the conversation I had with myself was, there's no way he is lying about having money. Now, I am one to believe that. <laughs> right. I am one to believe that. When you talk to yourself, you talking to a real nigga. You was not a real nigga in that moment. You didn't know who you were in that moment. You should have been talking to somebody else. Uh. <laughs> you saw you saw the paper from Chase. They don't just approve $750,000 for a mortgage for anybody. Um 
You see, I've seen his checking account. You see how much money's in his available checking. Like you, you, I don't think he's lying. <laughs> I don't think he's lying about that. But what is it? Is it that he doesn't trust me? Like I second guess myself so much. Is it that he doesn't trust me? Is it that maybe he doesn't really want to get married? Like what is it? Because I know what I saw. I know what I heard. The fuck did I mean? Fuck, I keep doing that. This is... Okay, so... How deep this something went. And for... Let me just get through the holidays. And for my case, they don't just approve $750,000 for a mortgage for... Definitely seen that shit as a screenshot, friend. Anybody. Um, <clears throat> you see... I've seen his checking account. <clears throat> you see how much money's in his available checking. Like you, you, I don't think he's lying. <laughs> I don't think he's lying about that. But what is it? Is it that he doesn't trust me? Like I second guess myself so much. Is it that he doesn't trust me? Is it that maybe he doesn't really want to get married? Like what is it? Because I know what I saw. I know what I heard. I know that he's having conversations about, Move the money from this account to that account. Um, I know he's paying my car note and all these bills. Like, clearly this man is making money. I know that I saw the the promotion, the letter from HR that states his new salary is 200 and something thousand. Um, and I remember thinking, like, God, what, like, what am I missing? I'm missing something, but what is it? Because I know what I've seen. I've no. I know what I have touched. I have physically touched these these papers. Like, I know how to read. So, what is it that I am missing? He's close to his family. He talks to them all the time. You know, he's just <laughs> a regular guy that just likes to watch um, NFL football. He leaves me alone when I want to watch Georgia football. Um. You know, he's paying all he's paying the bills, groceries. I haven't had to worry financially since I've met him. And as a woman who had lived on her own, paying her own bills, my God, that is the most intoxicating feeling when you meet a guy who just takes your stress and your worry away financially. Yeah, but didn't add stress everywhere else. Girl, she was sleep with the enemy. But the downside is he took away the stress and the worry financially away and instead brought a mental fuck job I've never in my life had experienced. And I could not put my finger on it. I couldn't really talk to anybody about it because I'm a big believer in what happens at home stays at home. So I didn't talk to my girlfriends about it. I didn't talk to my family about it. But I'm just, I, re I just remember being like... What am I missing? What am I missing? Um, so we did not talk about houses. We did not look at cars. We didn't do any of that for November, December. And he came to me like around Thanksgiving. And he, what I thought was a very open, loving conversation. And in that conversation, he was like, okay, I know I have fucked up. I know that things are not feeling too strong right now. He was like, I want us to get married. I uh -huh. want I, I want a home. Um, I will show you whatever you need to see to put you at ease. Um, he was very, um, like, contrite. He was very... Just like what what do what do I need to do to put your mind at ease so that you know I'm in this and that I want this and that I love you and I want you to be my wife. Um, so I was like, show me your accounts. He showed me his checking. He showed me. How did he show you? I would have needed him to go to the application. Okay. Log out. Yeah. Yes, log out. 
Go back in with your face ID. Okay. Put in the password verification, whether it goes to your email or to your number. All right. Then I need to see the amount. Also, mm -mm, I ain't done. I need to go to your account number. You understand what I'm saying? I want to go there. Then I want to go to the bank. Hello. I need to say, hey, friend, how you doing, Miss Jasmine? Oh, what's in my man account? Okay, she would have read out the same thing that I've seen on the phone. So after I decided to do so, because you going to let me or we done anyway, um, it's cool if you if he wanted to decide we was done. It's a headache off of me as far as I'm concerned. So, boom. Let me see what's going on. After that, I would be like, why the fuck you been playing with people and me? If the money's in the account, if the money ain't in the account, girl, I probably would have went to jail. <laughs> he showed me one of his savings. He showed me a Chase savings. Um, he did not show me the offshore. Because it ain't one. And he did not show me the U.S. bank. Because it ain't one. So he showed me those two accounts, checking and Chase savings. So I knew that there was money. What I saw in those accounts, there was money. I told him, I was like, if we're going to buy a house, I want it to be through the mortgage on Chase. I don't want to deal with this proof of fund shit no more. I said, I do not want to look at another house until the beginning of the next, of the new year. He said, okay. That is when we then had a conversation. So I guess I lied because we are going to have a part uh, 15 or 16 tonight. Um, but that is when we then had the discussion about marriage. And that is where religion came into play. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I'll give y'all the other part tonight. Stand by. Girl, we stand. Who the fuck did I marry? This is the interlude, basically. Um, I'm not recapping on this video. I'm just kind of answering some stuff that has been written to me. Someone was like, why are you airing your business out on social media? Because I can, next. <sighs> it's a valid question. Um, for me personally, I feel like this... Bye. was traumatic to experience to live through Bye. um and i will and i'll expound on that on another video the aftermath of the toll that this took um honestly <laughs> and it, i know some people are gonna be like that sounds crazy it is kind of cathartic to get this out because i cannot tell you how much of this has been internalized Alexa, what's the definition of cathartic? As an adjective, catharsis is usually defined as a boy relating to the purging of the emotions or relieving of emotional tension, especially through certain kinds of art, as tragedy or music. As a noun, cathartic is usually defined as a purgative. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for cathartic. Okay, okay, okay. So she had to let that thing out. That's what she should have said cathartic i had to let this shit out that what normal people would say <laughs> all right um since 2020 cathartic also <laughs> i don't want to seem like a cautionary tale to other women or to men for that matter but to my <laughs> sisters to my ladies white black hispanic asian doesn't matter if something does not sit right with you, investigate it. Um, I cannot stress that enough. You ain't got to tell us. If just one woman watches these videos and she's like, you know what? Something don't sit right with me. Let me look into this. Um, then it was worth it. Yes, it is a Lifetime movie. Yes, it is Netflix. Yes, it is crazy. Yes, it is hilarious also. Um, and I understand all of those reactions. 
as someone who lived it. <laughs> okay, Stone. Um, How many times you got to lie to me for me to still say? I mean, I was just trying to figure out, like, what would he even lie for? Why would he lie to me? I I know he has the money. I've seen a chase letter. Girl, when the kids tell me they out of school, I be wanting to call to school. Hey, how you doing? Uh huh. Are they out of school this week? Cause they told me, and I ain't necessarily get them. Uh, they are. Okay. I didn't get an email or a text message from y'all. You know what? Let me look. I just got it. I sure appreciate. You. <laughs> when I get money out of the ATM, I count it. Y'all know something I don't count that I have lost my damn mind on. Getting ones at the strip club. <laughs> they probably be giving me $80 like a motherfucker when you get that $100. Child, I got to check my priorities. All right. It was traumatic. But I feel like, God, it feels good to finally admit um, what the fuck I went through. And again, by the time this is uh, uploaded, I'm only to January of 2021, right after getting married. So when I think back on it, there's things that I'm very, very grateful for. Um, there are things that I'm just like, why? Why did you not pay attention? Why did you not question? Um, and the sad part is I can't even begin to tell you, I don't remember the woman I was before I met that man. I don't remember. Um, because going through something like that, it changes you. And I've seen some women in the comments who were like, I was married to a habitual liar. I was married to a pathological liar. My baby daddy's a, a pathological liar. And my heart goes out to them because until you have dealt with someone so depraved, you, you really don't quite know how bad it can get. Um, so I'm fully aware that this was a risk, putting this out on social media, telling my story, my truth, and really kind of being like, look, this is this is what I went through. I made dumb decisions. I overlooked things I should not have overlooked. Oh my God, damn it. Who the fuck did I marry? She absolutely put herself through all this shit. I overlooked things I should not have overlooked. Period. I this argued fault. away things I should not have argued away. Um, I can pinpoint exactly the moment I should have left. I still feel like God is sitting on the throne and he's like, I never planned for your monkey ass to marry him. Uh, hello. I never even planned for you to go out and date with him. That's why I blew your tire. Hello. But you hard headed and you went anyway. Hello. And then I tried to go ahead and show you signs. You ignored them. Hello. I feel like God did everything to help me as his child be like, this is not who I created. He even to took your, the seat. Your helpmate. And I was like, God, you taking too long. I want to get married. You taking too long. I want to have a family. You're taking too long. And to do it for the sake and of marriage is either, even are the crazier. These consequences that I am paying for basically telling God you took too long. And um, I feel like God's grace is sufficient. It is. But at the same time, and I'm not perfect. I mean, not perfect at all. None of us are. But I do feel like when I sit back and I replay the events that happened, I truly cannot believe that was my story. I was saying that because, y'all, it's the truth. How many more signs do we have to have? That's a blessing because that would have been like, come on now, 18 a lifetime worth of, of a liar. It wasn't meant to be. 
because all I wanted was to meet a guy for him to be my best friend for us to get married have a family I wanted someone I could make fun of his big old forehead and he make fun of my nappy head and all my wigs and yet he uh. was my ride or die um I wanted someone that I could be like man help me with these kids and he helped me with the kids we had a nice home we were comfortable that is what I wanted and I've said this before, and I say it again. I truly thought, I truly hoped it was my turn. You see the women who are, you know, so happy and, um, you know, they're in these loving marriages and life just looks good. I really, really wanted it to be my turn. Oh, God. And so... I excused away a lot of stuff that I hope the next woman who sees this does not excuse because I don't wish this on anybody. I don't wish this on anyone. We didn't wish it on you. I'm I'm getting tired. That's what happened last night. I was watching. I was like, yo, I'm so drained. (laughs) To feel the way I felt the moment I discovered the whole truth. Um, So I just wanted to say that because I think it's important to try to answer the, why is she posting this? Honestly, I was tired of holding it in. I was tired of holding it in. Um, And I hope it helps somebody. I hope it helped you, friend. Okay. Let's all take a deep breath. <sighs> Let's all get some sleep. Um, if you don't have anything to do and you just want to wish me a happy birthday, wish me a happy birthday tomorrow, February 15th. Shout out to Team Aquarius. Good night. I'm exhausted. I ain't want to take a deep breath with her friend because this was her fault. I did a little, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? Girl, let's just go to the next one. Bye.